Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend DG Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including The Quantum Zone, This That or the Third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Ron Mars. You are listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. In brightest day. In blackest night. No evil shall escape my sight. But those who worship evil's might. Beware my power. Green Lantern's light. Hello and welcome to the 150th episode of Sector 2814. That's a lot of numbers. The Green Lantern podcast. I am Phil. Joining me, as always, master of all cores, it is... I am Will. Hey, everyone. That's right, kids. Episode 150. So we decided to pick something big before we jump into three months of Blackest Night. So, yes, this time we'll cover it. Divis- it's divisible by 50. It's a super important issue. And 100. Episode. In- oh, no, wait. <laughs> by 50, not 100. All right. Yes. So we're covering Green, Green Lantern, Earth 1, Volume 1 and 2. Nice. Because one wouldn't have been big enough for a big episode like this. That's right, Will. It's divisible by 50. If I could figure out a way to put uh, foil on the uh, episode image, I would. And make it glow in the dark. Yes. And die cuts. Metallic the cover. Gate full. Yeah. Make it like, <laughs> like open and closed. Perfect. Yeah, exactly. absolutely. Because we love the 90s, kids. Prism. We need a pr- hall, mm. hall of prism. There we go. That's right. All right. So, yes. 150. 50 episodes already doesn't doesn't seem like it. I guess we've been having too much fun. Exactly. I mean, we've been uh, we've been burning through the Green Lantern universe <laughs> for 150 episodes, which is pretty darn cool. Again, I mean, Blackest Night will slow us down a little bit, and then once we get to New 52, we'll have what four monthly books. Uh, yeah, that'll that we will we will still be burning through it, but we will not be, as quickly. Not as quickly. Yeah, definitely not as quickly. I think I told you back in the day, if we ever catch up to, like, you know, current day, I mean, we could always go back and do Silver Age stuff. I don't care. I know. I, I, you know, and I figure we'll catch up maybe in another, let's see, Blackest Night. Blackest Night really only pushes the needle ahead, like, eight months. So we're going three, taking three months to go eight months, right? Yeah, so, yeah that, 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 that's going to hold us back somewhat, yeah. yeah. And then it'll be one month for us. See, we'll have four books a month, so if we're doing four an episode... Actually, we probably won't make much progress then, you know, once we're doing four bucks a month. Math, kids. Math. (laughs) Have fun with math. Math problems are fun. But but then but then it's not going to help our cause when we get to that year where there was no Green Lantern book. (laughs) (laughs) Although we'll be pretty close to the end by that point, you know. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, you know, it'll be interesting to, you know, see the because there's the or there were two books a month, you know, Green Lanterns and Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps, yes. you know, post New Fifty Two. So yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be quite a while till we catch up, and you know, we've got two books a month right now. Exactly. Yeah. And, I mean, again, we can all, if we always catch up. Like I said, we can do Silver Age stuff. You know, anything pre crisis, mm-hmm. we could do any of the Green Lanterns appearances in ju- any of the Justice League books or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, often and occasionally we will uh, meander back around and do a quantum zone like happened mm-hmm. recently. Mm-hmm. <laughs> episode 155. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So total combined, Will. I mean, we've done over 300 episodes together. So, yeah, that's that's like six years, man. And I've still never we've never met in person. I know. I know. <laughs> we met each other. Were you? Let's see. Let's 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 spin the way back machine back a second. Was it you that was looking for somebody that wanted to do a Quasar podcast? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, it yes. was you. Okay, it was me. Then it yes. was, and uh, you reached out to me from via the Quantum Zone, I think. And then there was Matt. Well, I threw and... it up. I threw it up on Twitter, and then you know, you and Matt both responded, and I was yeah. like, "Well, this is good." I'm like, "Well, you know," I'm like, if, "We'll see." I have two. I have two options. So if somebody doesn't work out, I have, I have a backup. <laughs> but no, I mean, uh, and we had a blast for a hundred and. When did we finally stopped it at about one fifty two? Something like it? something like that. One fifty one. Something like yeah, that. Like, yeah. And transitioned over to 
Sector 2814. Sector 2814. The Green Lantern, Green Lantern Podcast. <laughs> where, we, where we've had such highs as a talking to creators such as Ron Mars and uh, Jeremy Adams to the Lowe's <coughs> Action Comics Weekly. Uh, <laughs> we don't speak of that, Phil. I know. <laughs> or Will's favorite and era. We talk to... Or Will's favorite era, the 90s Guy Gardner book. Oh, yeah. that was We, we love that so much, don't we? Um... <laughs> Also, we we got to talk to uh, Ben Rob. Yes, uh, yes, which was yes. great. You know, from a Green Lantern standpoint, and from us being you know kind of uh, Quantum Leap fanboys yes. as well. So, <laughs> oh yeah, well, all I... good. Lots of good stuff. Lots and lots of good stuff. Oh, and you know, well, it wasn't really. He is Green Lantern. Uh, he's Green Lantern family. So you know, we got to talk to Jeff Johnson. You know, because of yes. the Wondercast yes. and, and all that. So, yep, lots of lots of good. Good shows out there. I think now's the time where we plug the playlist, Phil. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, well, again, I mean, you can find every episode of The Quantum Zone has its own playlist on the Capes and Lunatics YouTube channel. So does Sector 2814. So basically, every any show we do, yes, has a, its own playlist on the YouTube channel. That's the, qu- that's the easiest way if you just want to watch or listen to one show. Because, again, on the podcast, it's interspersed with other shows. Yeah, the, the YouTube channel, everything has its own playlist. So if you just want to listen to one show, there you go. There you go. Although you should listen to everything. Uh, you but, should. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, you know what I wanted to bring up? Um, I, You know how we were talking, uh, was it last episode or the one before, about, oh, it, you know, is, is uh, Green Lantern War Journal now an ongoing or not? Uh-huh. It's possible because I know originally this, this Green Arrow series that's been going on, I think they originally they touted that as a six-issue uh, uh, miniseries. But supposedly they solicited a seventh issue, so I'm thinking they they promoted that to an Ooh. ongoing. So it's possible. Mm, okay, very cool. I mean, we could just uh, you know I guess ping the editor or ping Philip Kennedy Johnson or somebody and you know see. Oh yeah, you know, I, oh yeah, I should, I should do that tonight or tomorrow. And be like uh, two questions for you, sir. One, uh, yes, has the uh, War Journal been uh, upgraded to an ongoing? And two, would you come speak to us? <laughs> <laughs> Let's come talk Green Lantern on Sector 2814, the Green Lantern podcast. I mean, I would love to talk to him about that. He's also, I think he's a, I think he's about to wrap up his action comics run, which has been going on for a while. And then uh, he's working on the Hulk for Marvel right now. So, I mean, he's got a few That's things right. going. So. Very cool. Mm. Very, very cool. So, uh, before we uh, went live and I was messing with, the, you know, the ring oh, and yes. the camera. Ooh, like that. Uh, anyway, um, uh, Green Lantern 6 came out uh, today, and I've heard that there are some, uh, I've not heard what the spoilers are, and I have not gonna, I'm gonna avoid the spoilers, but I've heard that uh, big things happen. I don't know what those things are. Uh, maybe they're not big things. Maybe they are, but I am very yes. much intrigued. As of this recording, kids, neither one of us has read it. By the time we get to next episode, I will have read it, and... Uh... I'm sure we'll be like, I haven't read it yet. I'll be like, oh my God. I'll be like, how did you read it? <laughs> I'm sure I'll be like, sure. you mean you didn't turn to page seven and see? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like something you would do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then you'll never guess you showed up. It was. <laughs> <sighs> well, and as much as I am looking forward to reading that and, you know, I guess the w- next week will be new issue of Green Lantern War Journal as well. I can't, they're a week apart, aren't they? I believe Typically. so. Yeah. We have this to discuss. Yes. Green Lantern. And, yes, we're going to talk about vol- Earth 1 Volumes 1 and 2. Yes. And I, like I was telling you, this hardcover is just beautiful. It really is. I mean, it's... Uh, okay, I'll go ahead and say it. It's a really nice package. That's just a really nice package. I agree, sir. <laughs> like I said, yeah, they they bound all the like the Earth ones like that, uh, mm-hmm. and they kind of gave them like their own cut. Co- they're all their own like color scheme. Like I like yep. I think the Wonder Woman was yellow. I forget. Oh, was the su- I think Superman might have been red and Batman's blue. But yeah, so mm-hmm. and of course Green Lantern's green. But yeah, they kind of gave them their own color scheme. Like you, you know, you could t- you set them all on the shelf. You could tell you know which is which. Just, Who's who? Yeah, I mean yeah. the spine the spine on it is really nice. Yeah, and I mean just the overall design. It's I mean, it really is. Yeah, and it's, it's hardcover. It's a beautiful so book. Yeah, you're paying a little more. It's like 25 bucks, but still, it's worth it. Oh, yeah. It's, it's really, really nice. Well, I'm, it's... It's just I'm a impressed. really nice package. 
Exactly. <laughs> um, was this how uh, had? See, I I just got I just got these in because I mean I'd heard about them, but I had mm-hmm. never you know picked them up. Um, how long? When did you when did you first come in contact with Earth One? I'm Green sure. Earth One. Uh, what the Green Lantern stuff? Um, I'm trying to remember. I don't know if I got them the day they were released, but I think I got them within a, like a few months of when they were released. So okay, yeah, it cool. wasn't like. Because they've been out, it was what, uh, 2016, 2017? Is that when this came um, out? Number one saying 2018. Oh, 2018, okay. And then let's see. Number two is saying 2020. So yeah, first one was May 2018, then the second one saying August 2020. So. Cool. So yeah, yeah that's what I was going to say. That's the other thing, too, where it's like, the, yeah, they usually gave you like a little. Um, you know, yeah, they're like twenty five dollar books, but like they weren't putting them out monthly. Monthly, like, yeah. You're like you're lucky <laughs> Although, if you got the next one like within a year or two, yeah. So, give it, you know, in a decade or two, that's going to be the monthly cost of comics. So, no, <laughs> oh, don't even joke about that. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. <laughs> I know. I bought. I, yeah. Oh my god! I was out shopping today and actually like stopped into a comic shop and like got uh, some like uh, not my not my regular shop like a different one. So that's why I didn't pick up any DC books. But uh, I bought some old stuff and it's just like I'm looking at it's stuff from like the like late eighties early. It was some Superman's from like the late eighties early nineties. Seventy five cents a dollar. I'm like, oh, these, those were the days. Those were the days. Yeah. yeah. I'm, and you know it's it's hard for me. It kind of it. I, hurts me a little that she would say old stuff and talk about the 80s or 90s because it's not old <laughs> but apparently it is now so there you go <laughs> i think i've said this to you before i, I always think it's any any of the comics that came after like the year 2000 is like that new stuff but again it's like yeah. it's like you say 2001 20 years old yeah, yeah. it's like 20 some <laughs> years old yeah get off my lawn sorry <laughs> You know, ask some of these punk kids. It's like, oh, did you read any old Spider-Man? Oh, yeah, I read stuff. I read Civil War. It's like, wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Back in my day, we had McFarlane. <laughs> yeah, we had Roger Stern <laughs> writing. <laughs> we had David Michelini. Who was the Hobgoblin? <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh. All yeah, right, they messed that up a few times. Anyway, uh. yes. all right, <laughs> should we get to these? Because yeah, these are a little like, longer yep. than usual. All right, so you bet. Green again, kids. Different continuity, so every everything and everyone is different here. So, Not, everything you know is is different. <laughs> all right, so Green Lantern Earth One Volume One, uh, like we said, May two twenty eighteen. Uh, I don't think there's an actual title. It's just Green Lantern Earth One <laughs> Volume One. All right. Uh, writer Corina Becco and Gabriel Hardman, uh, who was also the penciler and the inker, Gabriel Hardman. Uh, colorist Jordan Boyd, uh, letterer Simon Boland, and editor Christy Quinn. So, yeah, so we got, we got uh, 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 a different writer and uh, penciler. Well, a guy who's doing pencils, uh, inks, and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. So, yeah, new team here. All right. In the not too distant future, ex pilot turned mining worker Harold Jordan works for Ferris Galactic and is part of a crew mining at the asteroid belt. Jordan is disappointed to learn that a rival company have beaten them on striking a bigger deposit and are informed by their employer, Carol Ferris, to come home, but are not getting their bonuses. But Jordan refuses to return to Earth and continues to dig until he inadvertently finds an alien spaceship buried within the asteroid. He and crewman Volkov ex- explore inside the ship and find a deactivated robot, a long dead alien body, a power battery in the shape of a lantern, and a ring. Jordan radios in his discovery that Captain Amelia Seaton, before the spaceship loses, loses its support, causing Jordan and Volko... Volkov to escape with the battery and ring on a shuttle heading back to the Ferris six as Jordan reports their findings to the rest of the crew. Volkov curiously puts the ring on his finger and tries to use it on the battery. This triggers an energy blast that damages the hull, and Volkov is sucked into the void despite Jordan's efforts to save him. Jordan can only grab the ring and survives in space using his willpower to control the ring. The Ferris Six's crew are surprised at what they saw, but they cannot allow Jordan in the ship as they are fearful of possible radiation exposure coming from the ring. Just as the crew tries to find a way to get 
to safely get Jordan inside, the robot from the derelict ship is reactivated and attacks Jordan. After the robot slams Jordan into an asteroid, Jordan uses all of his energy from the ring to destroy the robot. However, this act sends Jordan further away into outer space. Jordan later regains consciousness on a medical bed and is surprised to find himself on an alien planet and meets his rescuer, Kilowog. Jordan learns from Kilowog that he is on the planet Bolvax Vic and is mistaken to be a Green Lantern in which Kilowog is much eager to become one, as Kilowog also possesses a ring passed down from his family and expects Jordan to train him. Jordan correctly clarified with Kilowog of how he found the ring and his ordeal with the robot, which its remains are also in Kilowog's possession. Kilowog is left very surprised and especially of how he was able to destroy the robot, identified as, of course, a Manhunter. It is explained by Kilwog that the ring and power battery belonged to the Green Lantern Corps, an organization of peacekeepers based on the world of Oa until they were all hunted and mostly eliminated by the Manhunters. It is unknown where the Manhunters originated, but among many stories, some say it was the Owens who created them. Since then, the Manhunters have controlled nearly the entire galaxy and have neutralized the central battery, making the rings no long, longer powerful as they once were. The Manhunters have little interest in Bolivax Vic as the planet is isolated and its inhabitants strictly forbid anyone from leaving and no aliens are permitted on the planet as, to, as, as this is why Kilwag had to keep Jordan hidden. Kilwag and Jordan decide to work together in learning how to use their rings from flying to energy blasts. Unfortunately, their training has caught the attention of the Bolivax Home Guard. Jordan and Kilwag are confronted and the Home Guard's commander chastised them for using the rings. Before the Home Guard are about to detain Jordan, Kilwag's lab is destroyed by Manhunters who have detected the damaged Manhunter before attacking the Home Guard, Jordan and Kilwag. The inexperienced Green Lanterns try to fight back, but the Manhunters are proven to be too powerful in terms of their weapons and numbers. Jordan, realizing they are greatly outmatched, grabs Kilwag and fleeing from Bolivax Vic. Once landing on a planet, Pinello, away from the Manhunters, Kilowog is upset with Jordan for making him a coward and flies back to his planet to resume their fight despite Jordan's pleas. Jordan then notices a devastated city in the distance. He travels through the ruins and finds a statue of a Green Lantern, Penelopus. Kilowog soon returns and is injured. He now finally realizes that he cannot do this alone. Jordan proposes finding any remaining Lanterns alive to fight the Manhunters. They travel from planet to planet, risking their depleted power rings until they find a single lead uh, to Graxios IV. There they are greeted with hostility from the Green Lantern Arisia Rob and her people. Upon uh, Jordan explaining their intentions to Arisia, she refuses to help them and deeming Jordan to be very naive. Oh, yeah, the tables have turned. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you know, you know. <laughs> The two later travel to Moab Gira and meet Vecca Trana, whose late partner was a Green Lantern. After Vecca listens to their plans and learning that Kilwag lacks key knowledge of the Lantern Corps, he reveals the shocking truth that the Guardians of the Universe who created the Corps were the ones who created the Manhunters to destroy the Green Lanterns under the belief that they have bestowed too much power on so many beings that could bring chaos to the galaxy. With the central power battery destroyed, there is no way to defeat the Manhunters with numbers when their rings are severely weakened. Left very disappointed, Jordan and Kilowog decide to get drunk at a space station. <laughs> Jordan blames himself for convincing Kilowog of finding help from other Lanterns and reveals how hard it is for him to trust people. He explains to Kilowog that he used to work for NASA to deploy an orbiting platform called Arrowhead that was supposed to, that was supposed to be for launching deep space exploration missions, but only to be weaponized into a defense platform. Hal trusted the wrong people who then used the arrowhead to cause a massacre to grab power and turning nations such as the United States to fall under the under authoritarian regimes. And he was unable to prevent it and forced him to run, forcing him to run away. After finishing his story, the station comes under attack by manhunters and Jordan is punched out by one of the robots. Jordan awakes to find himself along with many others to be used by slave labor by the manhunters. Throughout his ordeal, Jordan witnessed the horrible conditions enforced by the manhunters. One day, Jordan finds his ring recharging through unknown means. Hal tries to keep the recharging ring hidden until, his, until an alien accosts him, causing Hal to accidentally blast him with his ring. The Manhunters are alerted, and Hal hides with another slave, who, that, who reveals that the planet they are on is Oa. Jordan believes that a battery is somewhere inside the Manhunter's containment dome and can use it to recharge his ring, and then using its power to free the slaves. But his fellow escapee argues that it is foolish and that she doesn't care about rescuing them. 
The slave ends up stealing Jordan's ring, but fails to breach the dome. Just as Hal arrives and gets his ring back, the slave is blasted by the Manhunters. Jordan quickly grabs the ring and manages to get inside the dome where he finds the central power battery. He uses his ring to connect with the battery and comes in contact with a Guardian. The Guardian explains to Jordan that he is the sole survivor of the Owen Council who has escaped into another dimension and is responsible for creating the battery, the core, and the Manhunters. He admits that the robots were meant to keep the Green Lanterns in check should they have gone rogue and had safeguards to prevent them from replicating or replacing themselves. Not without, not without help from their creators. When the Manhunters murdered the Guardians, they depended on slaves to repair them. Right now, the Guardian knows a way to destroy all the Manhunters. He instructs Jordan to destroy the containment dome, allowing the battery's energy to flow free and fully charging the rings throughout the galaxy and contacting the other Lanterns and bringing them to Oa and using the central power battery to destroy Oa, the Manhunters, and as well as the slaves. Jordan is very hesitant to go through the Guardian's plan that will kill the slaves, but he has no choice to ensure the galaxy's freedom from the Manhunters. With his ring fully charged, Jordan is able to fight back at the Manhunters, but he is still vastly outnumbered. Jordan attempts to flee Oa, but stops and is reminded of his cowardice. He turns back and tries to break through the containment dome before sending a distress call to all surviving Lanterns to return to Oa. Jordan is eventually overpowered. Just as the Manhunters break through their, his shields, Kilwog and the other Green Lanterns, including Arisia and Fekka, Trana, arrive. The Lanterns break the dome and fully restore the central battery, though the Lanterns manage to save Jordan and destroy the Manhunters guarding the dome. An entire army of Manhunters are coming. They begin to debate on whether they should follow through on the Guardians' plans to use the central battery to destroy Oa, along with killing thousands of slaves. But Jordan wants a better solution. Fortunately, one of the Lanterns, a physicist, does know a way. He proposes that by using their re-empowered rings, they can control the central power battery's power to wipe out every Manhunter on the surface without destroying Oa or killing the slaves. Following through in the Lantern's plan, all the Manhunters on Oa's surface are destroyed. The Lanterns then proceed to save the slaves, but Vekka is fatally wounded. Vekka makes his last request to Jordan to pass his ring to someone. The, um, the, uh, the Lanterns evacuate the slaves to a moon orbiting the planet Paraqua. Jordan gives Vekka's ring to one of the freed slaves. As the Manhunters aren't defeated yet, the Lanterns agree to once again work together to liberate the galaxy from the Manhunters and electing Arisia as the Cord leader due to her experience. Thereafter, Kilowog and Jordan return to Bolivax Vic and freeing it from the Manhunters. Meanwhile, the Guardian is displeased with the offense on Oa. He wanted the uncontrolled blast from the central power battery to destroy both Manhunters and Lanterns, thereby removing his problems and laying a clear path for his return to the galaxy. The Guardian shrugs off his displeasure, seeing this as a minor setback that he will eventually deal with it as he prepared an army of Yellow Lanterns. <laughs> Jordan returns to his solar system, picking up the battery on the way and giving Volkov a burial before heading to Earth. He makes a surprise meeting with Captain Amy Seaton and revealing himself as a Green Lantern. Thoughts? Um, I thought this was pretty good. I... Hmm. I... As a Green Lantern fan, you know, it's I, I get that they were trying to ground this and make it less fantastical. So not having constructs was mm. something that took some getting used to for me. Yeah. Right. Because that's that's a big part of, of Green Lantern. But, I, you know, it was the story was good. The art was good, although for my taste, it was a little bit um, a little too sketchy. muddy. Yeah. A little too sketchy. And the, the colors were awful, awful dark, I thought, at times. So it made some of the it, it made some of the panels a little hard kind of to decipher. Um, but, you know, uh, reinterpreting the, you know, the Green Lantern core. Mm -hmm. um, it and they kind of reversed a lot of stuff because it's like first the lan this time it was the lanterns that came first, then the man hunters came. Yep. And it's mm -hmm. like this time Arisia has more experience than both uh, Kilowog and, and Hal. Yeah. And, Hal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and we got to see Sinestro and we get to see uh, in the next volume, we'll get to see Tomar Ray. And, you know, we get to see some of the mm -hmm. some familiar faces. John it, Stewart uh, next time. Yeah. John Stewart next time. It I don't know. I it. It might have grown into something, but it still it still feels and I don't I don't mean this um, in a bad way, but kind of not it feels kind of mean and 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 more run of the mill, more kind of mundane mm. than, you know, a traditional Green Lantern. But, you know, it doesn't have a lot of those fantastical elements. I mean, it still has the ring. Yeah. 
and you know they they go out of their way to you know point out that you know the ring doesn't choose people you're a good person or a bad person it doesn't matter you have a ring yeah right? yeah, <laughs> yeah it's basically anyone can pick it up because like yeah and we, mm-hmm. when they're on that planet yeah that alien swipes the ring from how and it's just like okay yeah and you know the guardian being we get more on his motivation you know in, the, in yeah. volume two but uh it uh, i'm not i'm not convinced I don't know that. I guess the the motives of the the, the final guardian just kind of and the guardians themselves don't make a lot of sense to me. Not that the guardians in Ever the did. normal DC universe make a lot of sense to me either. So you know that's probably not a really good criticism. But uh, you know th- this was this was good. I mean it was um, it, it was uh, you know a pretty you know it was a compact story. I mean how many pages is this thing anyway? Oh it was. Um... Oh great they don't page number. Okay, that, that's an annoyance. <laughs> ah, I forget. I, I believe it was over 100 pages, I believe. Yeah, that sounds about right. Maybe 96, 112, something like that. Hang on. I shall look it up. I was going to say. Uh, it's so weird because it's like volume one, it's on DC Infinite to read. Volume two, I think you have to like upgrade to like the, what is it, Ultra or whatever. I'm just like, that's mm-hmm. annoying. Not that I didn't have both of these in a hardcover anyway. Hardcover, but, yeah. yeah. It's 132 pages. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. So yeah, it, um, yeah, I, I don't know that I was probably the best audience for maybe any of the earth one. If the rest of the earth one stuff is, is like this, I probably wasn't the, the ideal audience because it's not, it's certainly not the green lantern that I've read since I was much, much younger. Right. Yeah. But, uh, you know, there were some really good parts about it, you know, not too distant future, you know, Hal's running away from Earth. That makes, you know, giving him an arc, um, you know, and having have him have to overcome stuff to be the hero that, you know, we expect him to be at this point, right? Oh. Um, that, you know, that was that was good. And it was great seeing Kilowog, you know, even uh, even if it's not our Kilowog, it's still Kilowog, right? <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Um, and, you know, there were some nice little touches here and there. I half expected one of the planets to be Mogo, but that might have been a little bit too fantastical. Yeah, <laughs> um, <you> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's. Uh, do Do you it's, think Do you think the tone of it too? I know you said mean, but do you think it's more like the the core? By the time Hal and everyone could discover is like the core and comes together, they've already had like their Emerald Twilight, and it was brought on basically by the Guardians. Exactly. Yeah, and I think the tone is you know just more. More realism, you know. Let's make it yeah. as real as possible, right? I think and, that 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 was kind of the mission statement for the whole Earth One line. I think so. Yeah, and you know, I I get that, but realism is just another tool. You know, let's not yeah. make it take over everything. Just like you know, foil covers shouldn't be on every comic, right? You know, yeah, it's just right. another tool to use. Um, but again, but, I mean, again, I, I mean, when you're dealing with alien power rings, I'm like, uh, what's realism? Exactly. I mean, you've already kind of gone. A little bit over the yeah. I mean, there was a good line, you know, by Hal was like, you know, it's not magic, it's it's technology. So I need to yeah. figure out how the technology works. Let's figure this out, right? So that that was good. Yeah. I, uh, I I thought it was it was interesting, and I'm not, and I and I'm still trying to think about the structure in my head because you know he gets rescued by Kilowog, and his first thought is not to go back to Earth. His first thought is let's figure this out right and he keeps yeah. going and they visit so many worlds until finally getting back to oh anyway he doesn't really come back to earth until the end and i thought that was kind of an interesting choice you know because it makes sense and you know they they plant the seeds you know because he worked for nasa you know we you know he gets made fun of for you know having worked for nasa uh, you know back in the day and it kind of makes sense that to explore but fairly early his his, you know, running around the galaxy isn't necessarily about exploring. It's about trying to find Green Lanterns, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I thought that was interesting. Hmm. And then we get, uh, you know, the reveal at the end where he's finally back on Earth. And and then things get, at least in my mind, they kind of skew even darker in the second volume. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's a big conspiracy, yes. Mm-hmm. All right, should we get to the second one? Rock on, man. All right. All right. Um, 
All right, so Green Lantern Earth One of Volume Two from I know I said it before. Uh, yeah, August twenty twenty. Uh, the team's pr uh, looks like the team is the same. Uh, all right, so <laughs> yeah, this it's it's almost taking place in real time because yeah, there was like two years between these, but uh, in the story, nearly three years since Harold Jordan's yeah. return to Earth. <laughs> Humanity is brought into the intergalactic community after the Green Lantern Corps saved the planet from invasion by the Manhunters. Currently, humanity is making progress in establishing relations with the Laurens. However, the situation is still tense as many of Earth's authoritarian governments chafe to dealing with aliens. During a trade deal being negotiated with one of the Laurens sh envoy ships, the commander of the orbital defense platform, Arrowhead, is suddenly given orders by Global Central Command, CENTCOM, to target the ships. The commander refuses to follow the order, but without warning, one of the Lauren ships is blown up. This prompts the Laurens, believing it was the humans who attacked, to retaliate by launching missiles on Arrowhead. Jordan shields the platform, but Arrowhead takes significant damages, uh, which then quickly exacerbate the, uh, which is, uh, exacerbates the situation by CENTCOM sending fighters uh, to the Lauren ship. The uh, Arrowhead is soon destroyed, but Jordan manages to save its crew. The Larn withdraw their ships from Earth, along with taking the human representatives, Nagendo, Matari, Sophie R Rivas, and John Stewart as hostages. The Arrowhead incident has put Earth in an intergalactic crisis as word of humanity being responsible for firing first on the Larians spread. Jordan takes the Arrowhead's crew to a hospital and learns from the Arrowhead's commander about CENTCOM's order and that he did not fire on the Larn. Soon after, CENTCOM demands for Jordan to surrender to their, uh, to their custody. Jordan refuses to surrender and flies off to the Jordan Aeronautics R&D facility on the moon. Now becoming a wanted fugitive, Jordan requests Amy Seaton to evacuate everyone out of the base and try to get rid of their prototype interstellar ship and its deep space drive schematics from falling into CENTCOM's hardliners, which he will try to convince the Lauren to give the hostages back. During his trans transit to Lauren Prime, Jordan contacts Carol Ferris to help the lunar base. Upon arriving in Lauren Prime's orbit, Jordan is confronted by Lauren warships, and to his surprise, a lantern who carries a yellow ring. The yellow lantern declares to Jordan that he is the defender of Lauren Prime and its sector, and demands Jordan leave or else his presence will be considered an act of war. Jordan tries to make his case with the lantern, stating that the incident on Earth was a tragic mistake and he wants to make amends. Unfortunately, the Yellow Lantern uh, 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 heeds to Jordan by shooting him with a burst of yellow energy. Jordan, knowing that fighting the Lantern will only provoke war, flies away to seek help from Arisia. Meanwhile, Arisia and her fellow Lanterns Sinestro and the Lantern of Comed are fighting Manhunters on Cometa 4. Jordan joins in the fight, in which it quickly ends with the Manhunters being utterly destroyed by two Yellow Lanterns, who then immediately make, take their leave. Arisia tells Jordan that this is not the first time uh, they've encountered these Yellow Lanterns, as there have been reports of them appearing throughout the galaxy, and the Corps have no idea when they first appeared, as the Corps is too occupied in tamping down Manhunter hotspots, uh, other, than, uh, uh, other than that the Yellow Rings are vastly powerful. What is even more troubling is the Yellow Lantern defending the Laurens, which is the first time a Yellow Lantern is aligned with a world, so Arisia advises caution uh, with dealing with the Yellow Lanterns. Also, Rissi informs Jordan that the Corps cannot come to Earth's defense if the destruction of the Lauren ship is perceived as an act of aggression, but will help establish a back channel to negotiate the release of the hostages. Traveling to Graxos IV, which is the current headquarters of the Corps, Jordan is reunited with Kilowog, and Rissi uh, learns a report... Uh, and Rissi uh, orders every... Uh, wait learns of reports of every Manhunter in the galaxy being recalled to Oa. Sinestro sees this as a chance to, of finally wiping out the Manhunters and, ret and retaking Oa, in which Arisia agrees to his suggestion. The entire Corps are assembled and launch their assault on Oa. As they make their approach to the city housing the central battery, they are stunned to find mountainous piles of scrapped Manhunters due to the Yellow Lanterns that are being led by the Last Guardian. The Guardian makes his proper introduction to the Corps, explaining that he had returned... Uh, to uh, rid the universe of the last of the Manhunters and return order to the galaxy through the power of his new yellow rings that are more advanced and powerful than the original green rings. 
So he makes a proposition to the Green Lanterns to join forces with his Yellow Lantern Corps, and together they will protect their home worlds and better it yet the galaxy. However, Jordan casts his doubts with the Guardian's intentions as he remembers his instructions to destroy Oa and the Manhunters along with their slaves, and he even refuses the Guardian's offer of resolving the crisis on Earth and returning the hostages in, turn, in return for joining his corps. Arisia also shares Jordan's concerns, and acting on behalf of the Green Lantern Corps, she declines the Guardian's offer. But several Lanterns, including Sinestro, willingly join the, uh, and take up the Guardian on his offer. <laughs> Meanwhile, on Lauren Prime, the planet's Yellow Lantern unexpectedly frees the hostages and takes them to an isolated alleyway. He then explains to them and he, that, that he is giving his ring and battery to them to help them uh, with their escape. Dr. Mutari demands wa to know why he is doing this, in which the Lantern admits that he had killed many Laurens and is immensely ashamed for what he did. It is revealed that he and the other Yellow Lanterns came from Quard from another dimension. <laughs> And they were once systematically oppressed until the Guardian came to free them and gave them yellow rings to defeat their oppressors. In return, the Quardians owe a debt to the Guardian and join in his war. After finishing his tale, the Quardian makes it, takes his leave to find some way to repent and make right to the Laurens. <clears throat> Back on Earth's moon, Seton and, a uh, Seton and, the, and their crew fly off with the prototype starship into deep space just as CENTCOM have invaded the base and are left drifting in an unknown part of space. Jordan has an argument with Kilowog over the latter's favorable view of the Yellow Lanterns. After Kilowog leaves in a huff, Jordan is then informed about the hostages' escape. Just then, the Guardian broadcasts a galaxy-wide announcement concerning the situation on Earth, claiming that humanity is responsible for attacking the, La the Larn Envoy and demanding uh, and deeming them an imminent, uh, imminent threat to the galaxy by showing footage of the Jordan aeronautic starship, accusing humanity... Uh, of use, one day using faster than light ships to spread their violent, intolerant ways across the galaxy. The Guardian has already dispatched his Yellow Lanterns, including Sinestro, to contain Earth and working alongside and working with the Global Central Command, and promising that his new corps will deliver on the failed promises of the Green Lantern Corps. Against Arisia's words, Jordan heads back to Earth. Uh, during his flight, Jordan is contacted by Arisia, who relays Carol's message on her discovery of what caused the attack on the Lauren ship. It was Lauren Prime's Yellow Lantern who had destroyed the ship. It is then made clear that the Guardian has conspired with CENTCOM to cause the attack. It is part of the Guardian's plan to sow chaos on similar planets like Earth defended by Green Lantern Corps members, giving the opportunity to step in with the Yellow Lanterns and discredit the Green Lantern Corps at the same time. Before Jordan and Arisia could make their next move, dozens of Green Lantern Corps members are reporting uh, Yellow Lanterns attacking them on their respective worlds. Graxios 4 is likewise attacked, and Jordan loses contact with Arisia. At the same time, the Guardian cuts off the Green Lantern's access to the central battery by teleporting it to Kord's dimension. Without the central battery, the Green Lanterns are depowered and being easily killed off by the Yellow Lanterns. Jordan is left drifting in space and resorts to uh, creating a feedback loop with his battery to energize his ring, at the cost of sending his battery into a nearby star. He eventually winds up meeting the former Lauren hostages thanks to his distress call. Upon learning from the former hostages about the situation on Earth from hearing uh, the Yellow Ring's communications, Jordan realizes that stopping the Guardian is the only way to prevent the galaxy from falling to his tyranny. Using the Yellow Ring, they find Seton and others on the starship. After repairing the ship with the Yellow Ring, Jordan makes his intentions of flying the ship to Oa and kill the Guardian after dropping the crew to, uh, in a safe and neutral place. But everyone doesn't agree with Jordan uh, fighting his battle by himself just because he blames himself for allowing the Guardians return and are willing to help. Mutari manages to contact the Lauren ambassador and getting uh, the Lauren's help. Stuart, who wields the Yellow Ring, acts, uh, acts as a scout to Oa and f uh, find the Guardian's location, which then Seton will overload the starship's engine and eject it on the Guardian. But the plan goes awry as Stuart is soon attacked by the Yellow Lanterns guarding Oa, and the starship nearly collides with the Guardian ship. The Guardian teleports Jordan to his ship inside a room containing an interdimensional rift. The Guardian wants to talk with Jordan uh, and make him listen to what he is trying to do uh, and tells him it may seem harsh. He reveals that he is responsible for how everything went wrong for the Manhunters after creating them and in turn led to his banishment, uh, not having fled as previously stated, to the Guardian dimension. Now, everything from the Yellow Lanterns, the war on the Green Lantern Corps, and his tyr 
tyrannical control of the planets are just part of his grand plan to rewrite reality in his image of supposed peace. He reveals to Jordan that the rift he sees before him is a window to the multiverse containing countless worlds and universes, and all of them are plagued by pain and terror. Acting on the lessons of a previous Owen known as Krona, it's always Krona, who had first attempted to touch time to discover the universe's origins and consequently shattering it. The Guardian is confident that he can successfully recreate the experiment and shape the universe through his expertise and Jordan's moral compass in which their reality is free of war and pain. But Jordan calls out his plan to, uh, as being absolutely insane and that his attempt to rewrite reality will only wipe out everything out of existence. Show me on the multiverse where Krona touched you. <laughs> <sighs> uh, the Laren reinforcements soon arrive with the Bolivax home guard, Kilwag and Arisia, who now wields a yellow ring that she gained from the Yellow Lantern who attacked her world. During the battle, Sinestro and the other former Green Lanterns abandoned their allegiance with the Guardian before be becoming appalled by the Cordian Yellow Lantern's actions and realizing that they were being used by the Guardian. The Jordan Aeronautics spaceship is badly damaged from its near collision and Revis is left mortally wounded. The ship's crew reassesses their plan and come up with a way to pilot the ship toward the Guardian ship and detonate its core. However, they have to manually overload the core. Revis suddenly volunteers to sacrifice her life to overload the core. The Guardian quickly teleports the ship to the Cordian dimension and escaping from the explosion. Before the Gar Guardian pilots the ship back to Oa, Jordan's ring is fully recharged by the central battery in the Cordian dimension and allows him to destroy the Guardian's machine containing the dimensional rift. This causes the rift to implode and the Guardian is sucked inside it. Jordan then uses his ring to contain the rift and allowing everyone to pull back safely before the rift collapses and seemingly killing Jordan. With the Guardian dead, the Cordian Yellow Lanterns have broken off their attack and seeing their debt to the Guardian is done. They are now stuck in this dimension and lay claim of Oa as refuge. As for the Yellow Lanterns who defected to the Green Lantern Corps, they did not partake in the slaughter of the Green Lantern Corps, but are complicit. Sinestro takes responsibility and, speaking for the Yellow Lanterns, declares that there was never a Yellow Lantern Corps and urging his comrades to go protect their homes and live a quiet life, which is what he intends to do. The Lanterns and Jordan's friends make their return home. Mutari plans on staying with the Laurens as a sort of ambassador in exile for Earth to bring peace between Laurens and humanity. Kilwag sadly mourns Jordan and regrets arguing with him. On Earth, the Global Central Command instantly loses control of the planet after the Yellow Lanterns disable and cut their ties, forcing their leader, General Jask, to go into hiding while different factions are taking advantage of the chaos. Jon Stewart sets up an appointment with Carol Ferris, offering to continue Ferris Galactic's work as Jordan had asked him to. But Carol wasn't so sure about interstellar travel being a priority given the current chaos on Earth, though Stewart insists it is worth trying as well as doing it for Jordan's memory. And another three years later, on the planet Quard, a Quardian city <laughs> is under attack. A Quardian runs to a building with the central battery nearby, crying out for the Guardian's help. Coming from out of the building in a green streak of light is a very much alive Harold Jordan who flies off to save the day while insisting that people stop calling him Guardian. <laughs> so, this one where, I guess, I mean, it's still good. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But there are bits of it that didn't work for me. Okay. I mean, we're talking about, you know, authoritarian governments and, you know, machinations around, you know, making war between and then on this hand we've got the multiverse and dimensional travel and restarting the universe i mean it you know if you're going to ground it which i think that's what the authoritarianism is and that you know these this kind of political intrigue and stuff going on you know now that you mention it why would the guardian need to work with centcom or do the yellow land if he's just going to rewrite reality it doesn't it didn't make any sense to me i mean it and he wanted to sow chaos so he would be in control so nobody would interrupt him when he tried, you know, when he destroyed the universe. It, it, I, I don't, you know, think, I, I don't it, think I don't think they clearly spelled it out in either volume, but I think the Guardian was pretty much insane. Yeah, I kind of – but, you know, we get this interdimensional travel. We get the multiverse, which goes – I mean, that's, that's fantastical plus. That's the DC universe, right? That's not Earth-1, so it – that part really didn't work for me. I mean, I, but I wonder if they were like planning something, they were setting this up. So like any of these characters could come and go like, you know, if, 
you know, we would see this, how Jordan or Jon Stewart or Kilwag show up in the, the regular Green Lantern book or something, but... Mm-hmm. So, and correct me if I'm wrong, the yellow rings still worked. The green rings did not work in universe. They only worked in Quart. Because right? the green central battery, yeah, was transported to Quart. But yeah, did they ever say what was powering those yellow batteries? I think there was a yellow orb or something that he brought with him oh, from okay. Quart. Oh, maybe, yeah. I mean, I, I just, uh, it totally it felt off to me to have something so grounded in reality ultimately be about you know, restarting the universe, which was the plot of Zero Hour. I mean, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, you know, it's still good and I enjoyed it, but it, it just, there was that, that tonal mismatch to me. I don't know why they always think they have to ground stuff. I, I guess they, I don't know. They think it some of this stuff's too fantastical for some people, for a certain segment of the audience. But I'm like, even that crisis on infinite earth, that's what they did after crisis. It's like, you know, Superman couldn't juggle planets for a while. And, you know, yeah. Wally West can mm-hmm. only run at the speed of sound or so, you know, it's just like, yeah, they kind of like, yeah. Depowered them and, you know, make it, and and then gradually the power levels creep back up. Oh. I mean, it's it, it just that that part just kind of didn't work for me. But uh, I mean, it's still a good story, and I I enjoyed it. I I think I think what Hardiman was doing too with his art by making it rougher, you know, was to make it look more lived in, more more you know realistic. Yeah. Right. You know, and. To me, that's not necessarily Green Lantern. And I get it. This is not yeah. Green Lantern. This is Green Lantern Earth 1. But, uh, you know, otherwise, I mean, the the story was good. It's just some things just didn't quite work for me. And again, that's not that's not to say this that's bad on, on the on the book, because I am certainly not the intended audience. I get that. Well, who do you think is the intended audience? I mean, you're a Green Lantern fan. Well, that's true, but I'm a Green Lantern fan. I mean, they try to they're trying to drag in new Green Lantern fans. Though, is that I what think they're yeah, yeah, I think they're trying to get newer newer fans by saying, you know, this is not the colorful superheroes of the DC universe. This is you know grounded in reality. This is you know, and hey, that's a that's a great you know a great impetus. Let's try to go after new readers that don't necessarily like or have been exposed to this, and let's expose them to this, which is you know what the push was, I assume behind earth one was, you know, let's, I mean, and, and this looks probably much more cinematic, you know, and as it is more grounded, much easier to turn into a movie, right? Oh yeah. Or a television show. Um, sorry. I'm just having bad flashbacks to the movie. <sighs> sorry. Uh, <laughs> what? what hot wheels track? What? <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, so yeah, that's uh, what what uh, what was your take on it, man? You you bought it when it came out. I mean, yeah, I get everything you say. Uh, and again, like you say, yeah, I think it's it was them trying to get new, um, you know, people who didn't regular read comics. I'm trying to remember. I thought one of these. I'm trying to look it up. I forget if it was like a Batman or Superman. I thought one of these Earth One volumes got like a um, might have been on the even like on the New York Times bestseller list or something. So oh, I don't know. My guess would. Was- be batman just because you know batman <laughs> well yeah well yeah because uh, you know everyone loves batman uh batman my favorite character <laughs> yeah i and again like you like you even say yeah uh, maybe they're setting up for like a new movie or a tv show again trying to trying to make it more palpable i guess for a general audience but it's just like a, a, a thing is a thing you know well, I think that's a more modern take where it's like, oh, yeah, we kind of have to, like, tone down certain aspects of our franchise for, like, a newer audience or a broader audience. It's like, why? A green, a, the Green Lantern thing is the Green Lantern thing, you know? Yeah, I mean, and it's, I mean, if you want to look at, I've had this, I, I, I've seen this posted, you know, across multiple places, you know, Star Wars, you know, is fantastical storytelling, right? Okay. Well, Green Lantern is kind of DC's Star Wars. You've got all of these things that you can, you know, a lot, you have a lot of the same facets of, you know, both of these, you know, ideas that kind of overlap, right? Yeah. And, you know, I know Star Wars has never been popular or anything. So. <laughs> and, um, and again, you don't need something like Earth One. I think, you know, Jeff Johns really, you know, well, first Ron Mars, of course, and then Jeff Johns, yeah. you know, kind of really 
just the ideas they brought in kind of you know yeah, made, reinvigorated made, made, it. made yeah. everything popular yeah yeah because i mean it's not 1960 anymore you know we're not like throwing giant boxing gloves well most of the time we're not throwing giant boxing gloves at people and stuff <laughs> giant boxing gloves are cool i know <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah i mean it's I I know that there was a third volume plan for this, and I yeah. wish we could have seen the third volume, you know, because I think that would have mm-hmm. perhaps tied up some things that I might have had, you know, some some issues with. But uh, you know, it's just, we got what we got, I guess, you know, at this point. Yeah, because I think they've kind of given up on the Earth One line, I believe. So, mm-hmm. but it will look really good on the bookshelf because it is a beautiful book. Oh yeah. Yeah. The packa- <laughs> oh yeah. Once again, it is a really nice package. Both of them. Yeah. Yeah. That was just a really nice package. <laughs> Which again, I think, I think that that was part of the uh, plan too, where it's just like, yeah, we'll make them look more uh, adult and, you know, oh, you yeah. put them on your bookshelf and stuff. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So uh, happy one fifty, Phil. Yes. Happy, happy anniversary. <laughs> well, <laughs> 150 episodes. I think I've only missed one. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that time you were sick. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. By coincidence, kids, it was a Guy Gardner episode. Yeah. I'm sorry. That was just the way it worked out. I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, don't worry. We'll, we'll fill it in for you. Yeah. <laughs> Our unofficial backup, Lil Hellfire. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Not, 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 not that, not, not that uh, people do favors for each other. But I was like, yeah, he's coming for you for at least a month or two, you know. Yeah, September. <laughs> like, well, two, two months now, right? Two Septembers. Uh huh. <laughs> no, covered only can never replace. That's never replace. Oh she is no, irreplaceable. Yes. <laughs> oh please, she's one of a kind. One of a kind, kids. Somebody's muffins getting buttered. That ain't my business. <laughs> Uh, all right. So, anything else on these, William? No, I'd like to. Uh... Oh, hey did did you see um the the visual gag where uh, you know the Cordings are talking about their oppressors and like the oppressors who aren't named all kind of don't they they uh, kind of sort of look like the Anti Monitor? They're kind of dressed oh, is that like the last page. I don't know yeah. if it, no, I don't think it's the last page. No, no, no. When like that uh the the guy from Cords like giving uh, John Stewart and his group the ring and he says, oh yeah, we were oppressed or whatever, and the Guardian came saved us. Oh no, I didn't. I didn't realize. Yeah, no, that. They, yeah. All the oppressors <laughs> look like they're wearing like anti-monitor armor. Yeah. Ah, okay, cool. <laughs> so, I don't know if that was going to be a thing too, or just like a quick, you know, Easter egg thing. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I think that's, you know, just to get right back into it. I guess that's one of the the problems with Easter eggs is like, hey, I wanted John Stewart to have more screen time. I wanted to find out more about him. I wanted to find out more about Arisia, mm-hmm. Kilowog. And, you know, Sinestro and, T- and Tomar Ray. So, you know, they're putting these Easter eggs in here in these characters. I'm like, I, you know, I don't care about this conspiracy. Let's figure uh, let's figure out the core, right? I want, I want to know more yeah. about the core. And I mean, <laughs> it's not even just this. I think it's like a, a weakness of mo- modern comics in general where it's like, did we really get to know how they even that much in this? I mean, yeah, yeah, we know we know about, you know, the whole NASA thing and stuff. But it's like we really didn't re- get a lot of him on Earth interacting. I mean. We didn't see him interacting with like Arisia and Kilwag, but it's like we really didn't see much with him and Carol. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I mean it's I mean, we're looking at 132 pages, which is eight issues, right? No, uh seven issues. Around seven issues. Something like that, yeah. Six or seven issues. No, six issues. Uh twenty two page six twenty two page issues. So um that's and that's if you do, and if you do, and if you do both volumes, that's over two hundred pages. That's like two hundred sixty-four pages. Yeah, so that's a year's worth of stories. And you're yeah. right; we still don't necessarily know much, you know, about what else was going on. You know, and anyway, I it, it's it's a beautiful book. I think you should buy it and read it. There are things that didn't work for me, but you know, nothing's perfect. Yeah, uh, and no. you know, part of it was probably I wasn't the intended audience. You know, because I'm a lifelong Green Lantern fan. Yeah, uh, who has read quite a few issues? <laughs> okay, uh, again, it, it was it was a good shot at you know taking a, mm-hmm. a you know a different take at like your Green Lantern, you know, yeah. almost like a what if, yeah, or an Elseworlds, mm-hmm. yeah. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. All right, William. Anything else? I think that's it. All right, kids. Well, you know what's coming next. You know it's coming next episode, kids. Back is right. Nike. Back is <laughs> Nike. <laughs> 
All right. Indeed. And again, send us your thoughts on Earth, Green Lantern Earth One, on any of the very, I mean, we're doing every single issue of uh, Blackest Night, all the crossovers and everything. Send us your thoughts. Get a pri- get a Green Lantern prize pack. I haven't seen any feedback yet. Maybe when these, I mean, these have only gone up on YouTube so far. So hopefully yeah. once these hit the podcast, yeah, we'll get more feedback. So yes, send us your feedback. Win a Green Lantern prize pack, kids. I got comics. I got pins. Badges, if you will. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Maybe even uh, Funko for one of you uh, lucky listeners. So come on. And this will be uh, when will this go? This will go live on. Oh, this will be on the podcast. This will be the last week of the year, kids. So, yes, this is the last episode of 2023. So. So happy holidays. Hope yes. you've had a good uh, hope you've had a good year and come back next year for, uh, you know, zombies and blackest night. Three months of zombies. <laughs> That's right. That's right, kids. The next three months, you're going to be getting black as night. Because I said, we're not joking around. We're doing every single issue and crossover. So, yes, next week for part one of, what is it, like 13 parts? All right, for part one, we're going to do Green Lantern 43, Blackest Night Tales of the Core number one, Blackest Night Zero, and number one. So, All right. All right, kids. It has begun. It has begun. Yes. (laughs) But yeah, by the third week, yeah, we'll get to all that. You know, the Superman uh, number one and Titans number one and you know who number one. So yeah, it's a, it's we're gonna hit the whole DC universe here, kids. So yep. yes, never fear, kids. All your favorites will be here. Batman, my favorite character. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Definitely. All right, kids. So yes, send us your again. Send us your thoughts. You will win a prize. I don't know how much easier I can make this. Uh, <laughs> Capes and lunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614 382 2737. That's 614 38 capes. And remember, you can find all things Capes and Lunatics episodes, social media, merchandise, uh, link to the Patreon. Please subscribe to our Patreon. You get extra content not heard anywhere else. We'll get, we'll get early access to interviews, which you'll hear on, the, on these feeds, but you also get a, at least one show a month you will not hear anywhere else. Lilith Hellfire, really Uns- uncensored Lilith Hellfire, which is kind of frightening to think about. But <laughs> well, well, yeah. What that sweet little flower? <laughs> Your mother's a whore. <laughs> All right, so yes, yeah, so find everything at tubespace.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network. That's tubespace.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network. All right, Miss Mister Will Allred, who's gone on it years journey with me between the quantum zone and here he's not sick of me yet all right master of the many cores master of the quantum zone master of podcasting and kickstarter comics uh and new grandfather mr will Allred. where can people find you uh you can find me uh at walred that's at w-a-l-l-r-e-d uh at gmail and facebook and twitter but i don't know for how much longer uh blue sky hanging out there quite a bit there's actually a really uh a burgeoning kind of comics community over on blue sky yeah i see so more more creators uh, over there yeah yeah it's it's pretty cool i'm I, I like the vibe over there a lot um and other social media that i've probably set up and forgot about so uh feel free to reach out uh if you'd like to check out the books that i uh co-create and write uh, you can check out crossover division at crossover uh we will be launching crossover division number five uh i think january 22nd so in the new year, mm. during the blackest night, sorry. Uh, and um, if you'd like to read uh, about, uh, you know, maybe some vampires, you can check out Diary of Night at diaryofnight.com. Oh, yeah. And finally, uh, you obviously have great taste because you're here listening to Phil and I talk about really cool comics. Uh, that means you probably love Marvel's Quasar almost as much as we do. And if you'd like to find out more about Quasar, you can do that at the Quantum Zone, quantumzone.org. I am God. <laughs> and you mentioned nice package a couple of times tonight. Seems like yeah. I'm getting a package every other day. <laughs> uh, he goes limp in my grip. <laughs> those I leave live reads. Nice. Oh, yeah, those live reads. <laughs> they aren't even attempting to enter our offices. Yep, that's the one. <laughs> and for the 150th time. I, of course, love how Jordan. I do. <laughs> All right, kids. Thank you for joining us for 100, 150 times. Come back for at least 150 more. We got a lot of books to get. And when we come back, Blackest Night Begins. 
We're here. Yes. <laughs> For three months, kids. January, February, and March. Blackest night. Is it still over into April? I don't think. I think it works out perfect. I'm trying to remember. I think it might work out perfect. Because one of the months, I think, has like a fit. Yeah, so week, I, yeah, I think it works out perfectly. Yeah. Cool. And again, send feedback. Get a prize. All right, kids. Come back next time. But until then, remember... Guardians be crazy. Good night. (laughs) They do indeed.